I'd like to now uh, move to our next speaker, uh, Dr. Philip Groh from McGill University. Dr. Groh is the professor in the Department of Biochemistry at McGill University. He has been the Vice Dean of Life Sciences of the Faculty of Medicine and is now the Deputy Vice Principal of Research at McGill. Dr. Groh's main area of investigation concerned the genetic analysis of susceptibility to infections and pathological inflammation. Uh, Dr. Groh has co-founded two biotechnology companies. Dr. Groh. You're on mute, uh, Philip, if you want to unmute yourself. <laughs> Um, I just tried to share my screen and I could not, but I did send my slides. So if, um, if somebody could uh, put them on, I think uh, Angela or Christine uh, have copies okay. of them. So maybe we can start with that. I just don't see the function coming up as being allowed to share. Okay. Uh, there you go. Perfect. So, um, so my presentation is going to be a little different. Um, it's going to focus on, um, on our institutional uh, situation and an overview of the tools and mechanisms we have in place for uh, encouraging early stage discovery and commercialization. And uh, we'll also point to um, some of the local context and again, the tools and uh, uh, entities that are available to, um, uh, to foster and facilitate innovation with a focus on, uh, on um, bio-innovation. So, I am a professor in the Department of Biochemistry, as I mentioned, I'm a geneticist by training. Um, uh, the, uh, I will have to uh, not apologize, that would be unfair, but uh, this, the uh, slide background takes a lot of space, uh, looks a little bit like an advertisement for the Innovation and Partnerships Office, uh, but you know that's, that's the, the slide the background that's provided by the university and uh, uh, it forces me though to keep my, uh, my comments and text very short. So, our presentation will be focused in short. Next slide, please. So just a, a bit of context about life sciences and health technologies in Montreal. Um, it is a, a strong area of employment uh, in the um, in the greater Montreal area that includes the South Shore and the North Shore. Um, it accounts for, as I said, almost 80% of the GDP, Quebec GDP in this particular sector. Um, in Montreal is ranked as uh, the 10th most active metropolitan area in this um, in this sector in North America, there are eight uh, higher education um, uh, institutions that, uh, that uh, uh, foster programs around uh, LSHT with uh, 6,000 graduates a year. These are from StatsCan of uh, 2020 and fairly reliable numbers. In terms of employment, uh, about half of the employment in the, uh, in the area, uh, total employment is about 35,000, depending how you count. But about half of these employment come from uh, R&D, um, being either uh, uh, institutional or private, with the uh, other half of 60% coming from a large variety of, uh, of CROs uh, in, the, uh, in the area of manufacturing, diagnosing, diagnosis, uh, medical supplies, and so on, um, that together, as I mentioned, come to about 35, 37,000 jobs. So very active sector. Next one, please. So um, one of the, um, and I assume as, as, uh, as is the case for other cities across Canada, um, the universities play a critical role in generating uh, ideas, um, assets, if you want, or content um, with a potential for, uh, for commercialization uh, under different shapes of form. And uh, uh, McGill is no exception and works in the environment, the Quebec environment, if you want, of um, uh, in general, and particularly the Montreal environment of, uh, of a number of uh, tools to incubate and accelerate uh, commercialization of, um, of, uh, of assets, if you want. So one tool is, as was mentioned in Shannon's opening remarks, is these uh, Centers for Excellence in Commercialization and Research, so CSER. And in Montreal, we have several. Uh, one is MedTech, and uh, as the name says, focuses on medical technologies. Uh, CQDM is a business-led NCE um, 
that focuses on, um, on drug discovery, so the Consortium Québécois de la Recherche sur le Médicament. Uh, C3I is, a, uh, is another CSER that focuses on um, 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 commercialization of cancer immunotherapy tools. And finally, Iricor and uh, Michel Bouvier, my uh, friend and colleague, is going to speak next. So I'm not going to say anything more about it, but that's another important um, uh, CSER mechanism. We also have in Quebec, uh, we used to have a number of these valorization societies. So these are uh, uh, government funded um, um, and privately funded uh, societies that help in the uh, maturation of IP, provide some funding. All of these have recently been replaced by a new centralized uh, valorization society that uh, I think is officially incorporated as of March 1st, and that will provide a, um, uh, a platform or a series of, uh, of services to universities ranging from uh, market survey uh, assessment of uh, commercial potential, um, assist with uh, intellectual property commercialization, um, and access the different government programs um, of the uh, PSO in, in our case for uh, providing direct financial support to, um, to spin-offs. Uh, we also have a number of incubators, local incubators, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, but just to give a flavor to the group of the kind of incubators, accelerators uh, that are active in the Montreal area. So for example, Adma, Adma Innovation Center is, uh, provides a, a variety of, uh, of uh, aggregated uh, services to entrepreneurs and uh, to uh, spin-offs, including access to CROs, mentoring, medicinal chemistry services, big platforms, and so on and so forth. Centec is another very successful uh, incubator accelerator uh, in the uh, uh, medical technology area, including artificial intelligence. Uh, they have their own sort of funding programs for uh, initiate, accelerate, and mature different um, uh, sort of medical technologies under the supervision of, uh, of uh, uh, in-house uh, Entrepreneurs District uh, Three is another one with a focus on uh, and not one focus on AI uh, and information technology. CTS Santé Naval also um, uh, helps uh, as a uh, as a, as a startup incubator, including um, uh, financing uh, the um, uh, Centre Québécois d'Innovation uh, en Biotechnology is another life science. Uh, incubator for uh, for startups and uh, CCM uh, uh, EM I'm sorry is uh, is another such uh, entity with again a focus on uh, uh, on IT and um, and artificial intelligence which is a focus uh, perhaps that uh, that's a little bit unique to the to the Montreal area uh, in terms of the institution as far as McGill is concerned, we have the uh, Innovation and Partnerships Office, who plays a critical role uh, in, the, um, in the assessment, um, counseling, if you want, or guidance, and uh, development of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of assets and discoveries. It is also in charge of, uh, of interaction with industry, and I'll say a bit more about this uh, in, in the next few slides. We have also a number of uh, additional um, Local incubator engine is a uh, is an incubator uh, from the uh, engineering department that also provides space and and limited resources, but to uh, initiate projects and foster innovation. The Dobson Center uh, for Entrepreneurship is another um, is another such uh, incubator that focuses uh, more on the um, uh, student or undergrad and grad student uh, innovation. It runs a series of competition, um, uh, including the Dobson Cup. It's very active. It's run by the school, the business school of uh, the Des Hotel Business School at um, at McGill. And then we have more punctual programs like the um, uh, the Click. So this is a uh, clinical innovation competition for that's open to all uh, in the in diverse areas uh, in the Faculty of Medicine at McGill. And then one uh, that I'm going to spend a little bit more time on is Neurosphere, which is a, um, um, uh, a specific 
uh, accelerator in the area of neuroscience that was spun out of the um, of our uh, CFREF award um, in uh, uh, that we received at McGill a few years ago. Next slide. So in terms of uh, numbers, uh, these are um, these are the um, funding if you want revenues from McGill. So 172 million in uh, tri council and probation agency to the Faculty of Medicine. Overall, uh, 422 million to the university. Um, in if one includes um, uh, philanthropy, industry, uh, CERCs, uh, CRCs, and so on and so forth. And with reference to the uh, previous um, slide, some of the some of the pro, some of the um, uh, Quebec uh, government uh, investment um, in commercialization, either through CQDM, MedTech, and on those PSO grants another 30 million over this time over the past 10 years, as opposed to the other numbers that are that are for the fiscal the past fiscal year. Next slide. So our our interaction with industry um, goes through the Innovation Partnerships Office um, with about a couple hundred um, uh, signed agreement uh, between McGill and industry partner for 2019 with about a third of these agreement in medicine, about a third in engineering and a little less than a third in, in um, um, agricultural and environmental sciences. In terms of dollars uh, uh, for 2019, the uh, funding is 28 million, but that's excluding uh, clinical trials. I think it doubles once one includes the uh, clinical trials. The share of the lion goes to medicine with, um, with a bit more uh, than half uh, and engineering. Next slide. Uh, so as I mentioned previously, the um, Innovation and Partnerships Office at McGill plays a critical role. It has uh, 23, uh, is a staff of 23 people uh, that's divided into uh, four teams. Uh, one is dedicated to industry with respect to drafting and negotiating uh, all contracts and, uh, um, and then provide subsequent support for, uh, for follow up on these contracts uh, with industry. There's a technology transfer group that's the same size, seven people, that manages everything uh, related to intellectual property. Again, drafting, negotiating, executing uh, technology transfer agreements. Um, then there's an industry liaison group that um, um, uh, deals with, um, in addition to uh, research grants, also consortia networks with uh, these industry partners. And then finally, a staff of five to help with uh, data management, finance, and IP searches, this kind of thing. One um, thing that we've been able to implement over the past couple of years is we've been able to provide to the community uh, an opportunity to access uh, very early uh, funding. All of my presentation, in fact, is on, is on very early stage uh, uh, innovation. So we have, um, we have an innovation grants program that provides $50,000 for a uh, to go from, if you want an idea to a prototype or to, uh, uh, you know, a proof of principle or something that will then um, enable our, um, our researchers to access uh, other uh, non-university sources of funding. And the uh, INP team is currently working on developing with University Advancement a, uh, a much larger innovation fund that would be able to step in following these type of uh, early stage investment from the uh, innovation grants. Next slide. So again, some numbers. Um, over the past 10 years, um, 30 spin-offs in the area of, um, of, um, of life sciences with uh, licensing revenues of about 24 million. Um, new patent applications, about, you know, about a thousand over the past 10 years and about a similar number uh, or a bit more in terms of uh, invention disclosures to this uh, to this office, so this is the sort of scope and magnitude of the activity at INP. Next, right. So now I'll just uh, talk to you a little bit about um, some of the um, uh, one of the mechanism that uh, was recently put in place, Neurosphere. Um, so this is our um, McGill Neuroscience Accelerator, and we're uh, we're very proud of this uh, of this achievement. This uh, spun out of the uh, CFREF, so the uh, Canada First 
Research Excellence Fund initiative to which McGill was um, awarded $84 million in the area of, neuroscience, of neuroscience, the title of the, of the program being, <clears throat> excuse me, Healthy Brains and uh, Healthy Lives. The um, uh, one aspect or one, uh, if you want, um, defining features of, uh, of, of this award was in fact the ability to uh, translate some of the some of the discovery in, in basic sciences into um, into commercial activity and commercial opportunities. Next slide. So the neurosphere structure is uh, is uh, agile and nimble. Um, it is composed of a staff of four people, um, and this four person staff is the uh, center of activity of neurosphere and interacts closely with the Office of Innovation and Partnerships at McGill. Uh, it provides um, uh, PIs and trainees in um, uh, on McGill campus and also in affiliated hospitals with a series of, um, of activities and services. Uh, so first of all, it provides support, support in terms of uh, funding. So we have a, a number of funding programs that are um, directed towards um, discoveries. Um, and then uh, the office also provide um, expert advice um, to, um, to the PI and uh, to best position if you want the, uh, the technology with respect to market and with respect to other uh, partnerships. Drive innovation in that we support trainees directly um, and is also um, um, entrepreneurship training that takes place either in C2 on its own or that uh, in collaboration, for example, with the Dobson uh, Center for Entrepreneurship and make connection. This is a very important part of, uh, of the Neurosphere team is to um, connect to uh, partners with respect to industry, uh, venture capitalists and other investors, uh, either directly or through uh, networking events. Next slide. So this is a bit more granular uh, now and, and gives you uh, an idea of the scope of the activities over the past uh, couple of years. Um, so in terms of scouting, there's been about 50 projects that have been identified uh, by Neurosphere as having uh, commercial potential. Uh, those projects uh, are offered um, uh, maturation and counseling in terms of uh, meeting the individual PIs, giving advice on how to position the projects, uh, perhaps bring in additional consultant, training uh, some of the individuals involved, um, and then um, move on from maturation to partnerships, uh, meaning looking for industrial partners, investors. Those services are supported directly by the uh, uh, MOE, the Quebec Ministry of Economic and uh, innovation through uh, a separate funding envelope. And then these projects move into a uh, funding phase. So there's a funding, uh, we have, um, have 5.5 million uh, so far spent um, on uh, funding these programs, either directly through the CFREF um, program itself. And then for those, we have partnerships with uh, two of the CSER that were mentioned earlier on, uh, CQDM and MedTech. So uh, an investment of, let's say, 2.4 million as listed here so far, uh, raised an extra 6.4 million from these partners for about 10 million. We also have um, a separate neurocommercialization grants program that's divided into two blocks. So there's an Ignite phase, which is a one-year 50K investment. Uh, and we have, I believe, about 25 of these projects that are currently funded or soon to be funded. And then they move to an accelerate phase, which is uh, a funding of about 200,000 from the same program, but to be matched by an industry partner to bring, um, how could I say, independent evaluation, credibility and opportunity to move forward into the commercial uh, discovery pipeline. So uh, the outcome so far, this group, uh, 25 reports of invention, four startups and four licenses or patents. So I will uh, end my presentation with a couple of examples uh, next slide, please. Next, voila, okay. So first of all, as uh, far as uh, one example is Corbin Therapeutics, uh, I have to declare a uh, conflict of interest, even though 
I am not a shareholder or a paid consult consultant for Corbin Therapeutics. I was one of the founders, and as such, I, I am part of the intellectual property and uh, have a potential to receive uh, um, licensing revenues from, uh, from uh, agreements with McGill. So Corbin Therapeutics um, is based on academic research uh, in my lab um, on uh, neuroinflammation. Um, starting in 2007, 2011, report of invention on a, uh, on a screen, an in vivo screen for the identification of validated target in this, uh, in this therapeutic area. Uh, patent filed in 2012, discovery of USB 15 as, a, um, as an important player in um, uh, enabling neuroinflammation. Sponsored research agreement with Amerchem, a local VC group, uh, 1.5 million to support further the development of USB 15 as a therapeutic target uh, from 2014 and 16, 2017 publication in uh, Nature Immunology from our group describing all of this work. Uh, this came afterwards as a, a creation of, of Corbin Therapeutic as a, as a spin off with an additional investment from Amerchem. Sponsored research agreement uh, with. Um, between McGill and Corbin uh, soon after. Uh, additional non-dilutive funding from, again, the Quebec government and our own office at Innovation, at, uh, Innovation and Partnerships. And again, um, access to um, a, tri, uh, a consortium uh, funding involving CQDM um, uh, for an additional uh, $1.4 million contract uh, for the past couple of years for a total investment of uh, $5 million uh, non-dilutive. So this is um, this is a very early stage. Uh, this is the kind of uh, timelines uh, and pattern that uh, that uh, that were involved. Next slide. Uh, so as far as Corbin is concerned, uh, demonstration, the uh, scientific milestones, demonstration that USB 15 regulates regai dependent uh, interferon response, which may have some relevance to COVID. Um, um, then the site of USB 15 action, either peripherally or in the CNS, development of cell-free, cell-based assays, identification of candidate molecules, medicinal chemistry, uh, high resolution structure information on USB 15 inhibitor complexes, proteomics to identify USB 15 binding partners, and then uh, now extension uh, into um, uh, other therapeutic area. I have one more slide left, uh, Stephen, I'm almost done. Um, another example is Lauren Therapeutics, um, similar path, uh, discovery of uh, uh, academic discovery in, in a laboratory at McGill, and that of uh, Dr. Rajak, spin-off company in 2014, um, multiple patents, phase one for uh, in the CF cystic fibrosis um, uh, therapeutic area, uh, following phase one, additional phase two, additional investment up to $13 million and, uh, and an equity uh, round of 1.5. So these were some of the examples. I hope that I was able to sort of, you know, link it all together with respect to what McGill is concerned. So thank you very much for your attention and sorry if I went a little over time. Yes, no problem. Uh, thank you so much for providing this nice overview of the activities at Miguel.